Well, after many bloopers, hi and welcome to High 45, a discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news leading towards the singularity and high mind stuff as well. Give us a better intro if you've got one. Please um, do. <laughs> I'm Nathan Waters. I'm Tristan Grace. Well, that was the fourth intro. <laughs> He's got a nickname now. No, uh, I don't. <laughs> okay, what are we talking about this week? Um, I've got body scanning kiosks. Oh, cool. Uh, <laughs> it's a full time. We're just, we're just in, do we do an intro? Okay, okay, okay. I'm just saying right. the whole story in the Why? Fine, fine, don't say the whole story. I'll say the full story. The myth of the three laws of robotics that we can't actually control intelligence. <laughs> that was written by Aaron Sanez and he's on singularityhub.com. Okay. Slash 2011 slash zero. Sorry. Um, here's a really cool graph about uh, solar efficiencies. That's kind of cool. As they progress. And the next one, we've got the Intel 3D transistor. Yep. I'm sure you guys heard about it. It's cool. And the Chromebook. And the Chromebook. That's the other one. Then, um, the singularity topic. Uh, we're just going to go through the highway. Yeah, highway live stuff. And we're we're going to wing it too. We're just going to... We can do it live, man. Do it, live. do it live. Yeah. And we'll just, we'll just read some out and talk about it. And yes. Should be cool. Yeah. There'll uh, be nothing sauce. It'll be great. Um, oh, so why us. don't you start? Okay. Yeah, I'll just um, get over this fit that I'm having. <laughs> You're freaking retarded. <laughs> oh, I got a new laptop too. Yay. Yeah. Finally. Is it called <laughs> Dyson? No. It's not. Okay. No. Um, okay, so this is body scanning kiosks. Um, it's a pretty cool idea. Basically, you step into one of these giant booths that just look really, uh, Dangerous and uninviting. It looks like those game shows where you collect money. It like flows yeah. money around. And you just gotta rub it against your oily naked body. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah. It's, anyway, it's called My Best Fit, and the idea is you step into this booth, and it uses magic and basically uh, measures. I think it says two hundred thousand points of measurement measurement on your body. Cool. I'm guessing using lasers, and it basically comes up with a. <laughs> You know, you hope it's using lasers, not, just, really not just like an army of niggas, just <laughs> like touching you. points. 200,000 <laughs> touches on your body. <laughs> <laughs> you go in a boy, you come out a man. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, anyway, this is a cool idea. So ba is. basically, um, uh, apparently the, it starts off with uh, apparently women try on 15 pairs of jeans before they find the right fit. And so... Seriously? Just, yeah, because women are stupid. What the stupid. fuck is that? So if you could go in and if you could get your, your actual size and then just come up with a, a, per, a perfect measurement, which you can then... What? Actually, the interesting thing is, why would you ever want to go to a physical store again once you have those measurements? Yeah, I know. You can just... You'd go into yeah. the physical store, get your measurements, and then buy it cheaper online. Well, and get, get, get the virtual thing. If you can measure 200,000 points on you as well, just get a virtual representation of you and yeah. actually get that up there. And well, I wonder looking. if they, Do you go in naked? Well, you'd have to. Or at least in your underwear. You'd have to go in your underwear. No, you can see through the screen. <laughs> well, that's just... I don't know, well, maybe, it, maybe it does some, uh, like, uh, you know that... What's that body scanning stuff? Like, hardcore x-ray vision? Like in the airports. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know, I haven't... Well, once you've got it once, you think, unless you gain a massive amount of weight, you think it'd be pretty safe. No, actually it does. Yeah, it uses radio waves. Ah! So it does do that. It's not lasers. I should have read the article. Hey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I read the title and kind of thought, oh yeah, that's a cool idea. That makes sense. You know, yeah. they just measure you. So Why it uses not? radio waves. Yeah, that's, that's cancerous. Yes. Anyway, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Where do you, cool. where do you think that could go? Like, I, 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 I just like the, I like the idea of like just walking into a store, getting your measurements. Well, I like it. You get it. You get them once. back and then... Yeah. You, you get it once and then you actually go in to, you know, get the digital representation put on top of you. Yeah. You can do the exact same thing with the garments and then get it shipped to you. You just have to go back every... Ooh, you know what you so could often. do? Like, actually, you, you have to go back in winter when you're a bit plumper. Yeah, well, you know what you could do with, like, say, like, a big screen that's, like, you know, a full-length mirror coming yeah. down? You make that uh, have, like, a webcam in the top and so then it actually looks at you after you've done that and it superimposes what the clothes would look like on top of you. There's so the, um, the exact same way that you exactly. pose in front of a mirror, it actually superimposes it on top of you because you've now got the exact measurements. Oh, the mirror idea. There's, I was yeah. going to say that they've already got that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, not mainstream, of course. But, no, no. Um, cool. Using connection, just webcams and stuff in it. It's very dodgy though, because it's, it's just pretty much lines up a garment over the top of you and then... Yeah, and then you're it like... It doesn't run around you, it's sitting off the edges and it's weird. Well, that's what I mean. If you've got 200,000 points of thing, like, the detail there could be incredible. And yeah. the exact same way that you look in your, say, 
you know, in the mirror and when you get dressed in the morning, yep. you could actually then superimpose any type of garment that you'd like over the top of you, cool. then even get it shipped to you. And I mean, of course, in the far future when we can actually, like, you know, print, uh, like, you know, create some fabrics on the fly, <laughs> you just actually, like, you know, log into your, your Reddit feed, your Twitter feed, your Facebook feed, see some cool garments going down, you're like, hells yeah, I'll wear what Johnny Depp's wearing today. So it'd probably be 80 then and it'd be like all geriatric. And it's like, dude, you're not a pirate anymore. And, uh, Do you reckon everyone will still wear the same thing? Oh, well, it'd create like individual similar things. Yeah, I think so. Like, you know, we've noticed, uh... This is good. The, uh, yeah, the, the thing that everyone... Have you noticed everyone now that the main style that everyone wears is blue jeans? So, blue pants. Think of like, is we blue pants and a black shirt, usually. Or You'll a dark notice shirt. it everywhere. The cool character in any show, like, the, the, the movie stars, when they're getting pictures taken, that is what they wear. Like, as soon as you realize and, like, start noticing it around, it's, it's again and again and again. It, it, it's kind of like that effect when you're buying a car and you notice that same car yeah. everywhere. You will notice that all of the really... <laughs> Chrome just crashed. Ah, oh. Lost all uh, the links. Right, it did. But, uh, yeah, everyone's wearing that. <laughs> Very cool. You should carry yeah. around a Chrome... Chrome or comb? I should. Apparently my computer's wow. updating. Do you remember what you are? Cause what you I, do, it was? I do, I do, I do. You'd still go... Oh, it is. Why do you want me to pull it up? No, no, that's all good. I, well, my next one is on Singularity Hub by that fantastic guy, Aaron... someone. <laughs> it's about how the three laws of robotics can't control intelligence. I mean, this is, it's kind of a basic thought experiment when you actually consider it. Uh, but I, I think it's really good to actually just get the idea out there and to repeat it again. Um, oh, I'm not sure, it was on May 11th. Oh, um, so it was ages ago. It was, it was a little while back, well, two days. Is it on the so. screen? No. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, it was, it was talking about like, you know, the basic three, three laws of robotics and how they can't really apply to any intelligence that we create. Because anything that comes up, like, you know, you've got the Skynet example, or you've got the Howl example, or a any of those... They're all metaphors for current human problems at the moment, and that's what they always were. It was never actually, um, you know, addressing the issue of creating a higher level intelligence. Right. And really the thing that's permeated our culture so far is the idea of Asimov and the three laws of robotics, and we can control that intelligence. And even like, you know, really popular transhumanists yeah. always talk about, you know, advocating controlling the intelligence or outlawing the... In like, inventing anything that can actually surpass us in intelligence. Yeah. You get a lot of prominent thinkers actually saying this, and it just seems idiotic. Because you can't, I mean, the very fact that you can't chain an intelligence that's greater than your own. I mean, the, the yeah. example that was well, used in the article. you can't understand it. No, well, you can't. You can't be at that level yeah. anymore. Well, the example Unless was you, that you put like a, a, a shackle on its leg and it just grows a million more. I mean, that's great. <laughs> it's not going to do anything. Yeah. Well, and there's the, the other, there's the whole other issue of like, what is intelligence? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, that, yeah, that, that's true. You know I mean? <laughs> I, 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 I guess that, I think that opens up a whole new can of worms. I mean, like yeah, yeah. You, you can always define it going through, but we can, you know, point out that like, intelligent people are not there because I mean, you can already argue that a computer is already so much more intelligent than us right now. But yeah, and we can interact with it, and we can interact with it. And we can go there at a different level. Yeah. Well, the, the, there's we we there's ones and zeros flying around in electrical yeah. impulses right now, but I can still connecting interact with it in it some is. sense. It's connecting very well. Got it. Well, the, the whole thing that brought up the idea that we should, like, you know, treat it as our children. I know it's very cliche, and I'm sorry for what? the clicheness. But again, it is it, treating it like that, that, I mean, your child can obviously go and kill you if you wanted to. <laughs> uh, it's always a possibility. But you hope that but, by actually raising it in the right environment and actually un letting it understand more about yourself, the way that good parents do and understand what the parents' values are and how they see the world, yeah. that you've got the best chance of actually raising it in the world to actually see it in your light. Because your child is going to eclipse you the same way that it happens right. like now in the biological world. And that should be the way that we actually start viewing the intelligence that we're creating around us. Right. Uh, which I thought was a rather good way. But the other issue that it raised as well, which I thought was really interesting, is just society's view of superintelligence. What is society's view of superintelligence? Well, that's the problem. We've got like, you know, HAL and Skynet and all of them, but they're just metaphors for human problems. They're not real. Well, I always noticed the we in the West, the movies tend to portray AI as this horrible thing that will kill us all. In the East, yeah. they tend to portray it as something that will save us all. Yeah, yeah, well, that's very true. Again, there, it's just... It, but it's always a, a separate... It's, it's, it's very well, weird like, to get into. Well, what issues do they solve? Type stuff. Oh, I guess the, the, well, there's like, always you know, the idea... Cold War terror... Like, I mean, let's talk about yeah. Battlestar Galactica. I mean, that the Cylons are not artificial intelligence is a fucking joke if you think they're artificial intelligence. It's just terrorism right. personified in outer space. I mean, it was a good show, don't get me wrong, I love Battlestar Galactica, but it was not robots by any sense of the word. I hate that I'm an elitist when it comes to depicting robots in science fiction. <laughs> Jesus. That would have been cool if Osama was AI though. Oh, that wouldn't have, that would have been pretty damn awesome. 
You really could have killed him, you replicate him. You killed me once, I replicate you a million other hundred. <laughs> I'm in every cave at once. <laughs> He's the botnets. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, I'm kind of hoping that we're, we're going to see, hopefully in the next few years or something, like maybe a Hollywood depiction or at least a big movie to mm. depict in the way I, that artificial intelligence could develop. Because even The Matrix and stuff is more like, you know, an ecological concern. It's, it's very, it's closely related, I think, but not, the message isn't presented as well as it could be. Yeah. Also, I saw a discussion today, again, uh, I think Ted posted a thing, oh, yeah. um, Ted Susan, and it was just, oh. I think it was saying something like, uh, why do people... You, you've literally got the page right there. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> uh, it was something about AI. Here you go, Ted. You posted something about AI. I, I responded. I just... <laughs> I have a very short-term memory. It's uh, right. very, very horrible. I'll just... Oh, I'll find out. Here, actually, why I... is everyone so caught up with AI? It's something I don't think any of us can relate to or understand. I think we should really be aiming for something for interconnection, blah, 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 blah. I shouldn't have actually mocked you because I liked it as well and actually read the thing. And oh, yeah, so you exactly. I'm sorry, yeah. But no, yeah, so that, that idea point. of like, um, <laughs> and I almost, I almost think a lot of people, not to be a dick or anything, I'm kind of guessing. Okay. I, 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 I almost, think, I almost think a lot of people are starting to move over more towards our idea of AI. Our idea. Yeah, our idea. Our idea. Yeah, right. We, 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 <laughs> we, own we it. invented it. Yeah, right. We own the rights to it. Oh, dear. No. <laughs> The more I you know the, I mean? the social singularity. Yeah, so, well. yeah, yeah, that guy's popularizing it at the moment. Yeah, why not? That's why we got to write a book, man. I know. We should write a book. Just don't have the time or... It's the uh, literary ability, I think. Or Maybe. the uh, attention span to write a flaw. Well, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I could do it in like 420 characters. <laughs> I don't like, think that would be a good idea for a book. Just that, would it like actually, that would actually be kind of cool. But I reckon we should just get everyone else to write it. We should all write it together. Yeah. But, but just how do you do that? People have tried that before and it always sucks. Yeah, no. There was one book like that just came out recently. It was like 90 authors and 90 is a pretty pathetic a number. Right. It wasn't a very good book. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, yeah why um, are we... Your next story. Have we slaughtered that one? I think that's pretty good. Adam. <laughs> I, 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 all I'm saying is um, I, we can't control intelligence. I hope that we actually start seeing in our culture a little bit more of the what intelligence is. Like, yeah. you know, the future intelligence. We're, we're a little bit in the the black hole at this point that we don't have any... What was a good science fiction thing you can relate to about artificial intelligence lately? Uh, I saw the Matrix tops it. Yeah, which was over 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other thing is, like, uh, you, you can't uh, relate to intelligence if you can't even identify it. Yeah, that's true. There could be intelligences out there now, like our whole idea of, like, oh, what if the internet now is this intelligence being? It already is. It already is. It already you, is. You can't, it's difficult to prove. You can't really... I but, can. Yeah. Internet, do this. Beep. See, do it. Because <laughs> I told it to. Anyway, what's your next one? Um, this is a really cool graph. I just found it on Reddit. I forget which subreddit, but um, it's colourful. Yeah, it's colourful and it's got lines going up and lots of stuff mm. on it. It's very full of information. Um, the end. Ah, oh, nice. <laughs> so nice. No, no, it's uh, it's uh, solar cell efficiency. <laughs> so it's ba it's going back to even all the way back to about 1975 up to today, just uh, April 2011, and it's actually mapping uh, the different technologies used for solar cells. And actually looking at, you know, who made the discoveries and what jump did they make in terms of efficiency levels. We've got UNSW there. Yeah, UNSW, so hey. they were going along the, what is it? Crystalline silicon cell, single cell uh, okay. crystals. And yeah, really cool. Like, uh, the one that's kicking ass at the moment with the most, with 43.5% uh, efficiency is the... Wait, which Salt down? junction lattice. Mul yeah, multi-junction concentrators. It's a three-junction, two-terminal monolithic. Whatever that literally means. does not mean a thing to me. <laughs> like, cool. I don't know. We're like we're like really like big proponents of of science and scientific advancements, and we it's awesome, but have absolutely no idea. Well, it, when you get this detail, I'd say very few people do. Yeah, like well, you it, say that word to someone. It requires in the industry unless you're a spe like specializing in solar cell efficiencies and mm. researching that as your full time profession. Then, well, then it's a very pretty graph. Yeah, but it's I like the one that's rising at the moment. What's that one? Um, well, both of those. Oh, the ones right down the bottom at 4.4% yeah. efficiency. They're quantum dot cells and mm. uh, organic cells. So basically, Hells, yeah. growing solar cells. Well, those are the ones that are growing the most recently. Yeah, well, it's, it could actually be the case that those overtake the current ones. Yeah. But still, 43.5% efficiency. It's ridiculous. From pretty much 
zero in 1975. What's that? That's 25, 35 years? Yeah. So it's over that's a percentage point a year. We should plot that exponentially. Just aggregate them all together and actually see how the exponential rises. Yeah, why didn't you do that? But you couldn't, because we still, we've got a theoretical maximum of 100% efficiency. So it would have to be the, the S-curve. Yeah. That's still low. That's pretty cool though. It, it shows that solar power is, and I mean, what's Kurzweil's prediction? Um, I think he's saying like within 20 years, solar power will be able to provide all our yeah. energy requirements in terms of electricity. Um, Still, we still haven't worked out how to grow food from electricity yet. Did you see in The Transcendent Man, um, he actually was talking to Colin Powell about it. Did you watch it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you watched The Transcendent Man. The, the, um, yeah, yeah. He, he was in there talking to Colin Powell about, well, our big problems, you know, oil and all of those crazy energy dependencies and all of that. Yeah. And Kurzweil was saying that, oh, don't worry, um, <clears throat> solar cells and stuff will, um, will all make it okay. Yeah, it's, it's very... 20 years though, isn't it? I know, it's, it seems very short. you got to catch up to that before everything else hits the fan. I just um, don't see... Because it's very much a, a physical product. That I, I don't see it as being an information yeah. thing yet. Like, I love solar cells. Like, massive proponent. I think it's going to be fantastic. But I just don't... I mean, that, that's cool. Like, getting the exponential well, variable. We're talking, exponential now, isn't it? Well, we're talking 35 years if you're looking at that. Just looking at that graph. Yeah, but you're saying in another 20 mm -hmm. years it'll be... Yeah, even bigger. Well, maybe even less if it's already... It's already at 43. Yeah, that's a fair point. Maybe. Yeah, that's pretty damn awesome. Yeah. Uh, was, did you have another one? I did. Uh, Intel did their 3D chips. Oh yeah, dude, that should have been like our first story. What's well, not that That's... amazing, really. Well, we, we knew that was where I was going. It was like, you know, CPUs, yeah. more, more Law is always going to continue because the pressure there is always to continue. But again, it came down to like... 3D and then molecular and then... Yeah. Quantum. But it's not going to impact us. I mean, we, we, we were chatting about this like, you know... Well, oh, we won't notice it. Well, that's what I mean. We'll, it's, buy, the, we'll buy the next computer, it'll be faster and cheaper. Well, that's, that's yeah. what Intel said, is their next time, like, Ivy Bridge or something's going to be using that technology. I, I don't care, like, I just got, you know, the Sandy Bridge one and stuff, and it's got all this amazing technology, and I don't give a shit, it's like, cool, my computer's faster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whoop de doo And I mean, as long as, like, you know, Moore's Law's keeping up and stuff, but, I mean, don't get me wrong, I think it's really great, and it's great that we've actually got it going there, but... The amount of excitement that was uh, propagated throughout the internet was yeah. insane. Well, it's a, it's a big jump. I think they, they were saying that it got, uh, like, I'm just going to throw out numbers, 30, 30 or 40 percent, like, increase in speed and decrease in heat and Basically, decrease in yeah. power consumption. Yeah, true. Like, it's a big jump. Basically, it's it's a paradigm shift. That's why it was huge, because it's like, okay, now everyone... Now we can start going up. Yeah, There's another now, way to improve. Yeah, now guess. everyone's going to be doing 3D, 3D chips. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then that'll be the next big thing for probably the next, I'd say, Jeez. 10 years, I'd say. Oh, God, not 10 years. I'd give it five at most. Because you'd optimize it. We're already down to... That's 22 nanometer scale. Yeah, well, what's gonna, yeah, but the only thing after that is molecular computing, which is basically well, getting they molecules... They need to find something else. It's getting molecule, like molecular size... If, if you're following Moore's Law and all of that, though, that I mean, that's it's going to run out fast, because you can't keep on going up. Because you've got all the cores as well, you've got the 3D, you've got all of that. Oh, we should... Oh, yeah. We'll post a link to this. Uh, they did this video where they showed how small it was, like in a really corny, like, uh, high school-y type fashion. Where um, he, he's like, we have a shrink ray gun, and they had him, they had the guy standing there, and they shrunk him down with the ray gun, and then he went really small, <laughs> and it got down to the point where he's like, he's like, like a, a blood cell is like, you know, three stories high in comparison to what he is now, and he's like, yeah, that's only like 50 nanometers or something, Jesus, 40 nanometers, and they had to go down small. They're at 22. Yeah. Yeesh. So that was a cool video. Yeah. Oh, we'll post a link to that. Yeah. I. Okay, I, I want to preface this, like, I know I sound like a bit of a douche saying, oh, who cares, Intel made 3D chips. You are a bit of a douche. I know, I know, but I mean, that was, that, it's really cool that they did that, but... It's amazing! It is, but it's not... It's awesome new technology! I don't it's going to a mind-blowing that... massive change. Everyone's been concerned about Moore's Law ending. But it and now this a little bit. It can keep going. Nah. It's good. I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna withhold to until, until we see that. It, it just seems a lot of marketing and everyone's gotten way too excited and then that always seems like a bit of, you know, holding right. back and just seeing it. I don't know. Anyway. Hey, let's, uh, last quick story <laughs> is the... Google I.O. conference. Yeah, Google I.O. conference and they've announced the Chromebook. Which is, they, they've, it's been coming for a long time anyway. Well, we actually had that on one of our computers. You have done yours. Yeah, I've tried it out. It just was, not the actual laptop. Yeah. It's... Oh, yeah. Yeah, and um, I mean, this is obvious where it's going. I still get, oh man, I still get so many people just like arguing against me saying, 
oh blah 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 the cloud you can't you can't trust the cloud it's not secure when we're oh, giving presentations and talks you... out around in town there are people who are very much like well how can you trust facebook how can you trust google oh, yeah, it's like, like, you God, fucking kidding me? Seriously? Like yes, this is, there's a factor there. Yes, they could be they could be complete douchebags. That's just cute. Mm. But uh, I mean, I still and, and even like uh, like you know legitimate concerns like or points like you know oh well Australian internet you know wireless is so shit and it is in the states as well like three D is still pretty shit. Mm. But I mean the next iteration is like within <laughs> five years, yeah. Yeah. Like the next four G with like got, they've got like you know really high like hundred megabit fifty to hundred megabit speeds. With you know greater blanket coverage and yeah, I mean it's inevitable. You in, and I was it's even saying like you know what the first thing I've been doing for the last what I can't even count how many years is load up the computer, browser. Yeah. First click and then I'm like the only things I think I use offline is Photoshop and like some occasional games hmm. and maybe files. Hmm. But even files I should be using. Files Dropbox could, be, could be directly if on we that. had higher upload speeds. One thing I would actually like to say against that. Uh, uh, interesting discussions on there actually on um, Hack and News about uh, mobile um, development and about uh, if you should be developing for the device or developing for the cloud. The cloud? No. Uh, well actually what they've been saying is that you, like, you should do both but they, they gave like the example of like a word processor and stuff. That we, we were doing something like you know together with Google Docs and stuff but I'd still yeah. say that Microsoft Word is still so much better than Google Docs at the moment. At the moment, but even with that, like, how long how long has Google Docs been around for? And I, I really feel it's a limitation directly of the the browser or HTML. Really, if it was done in Flash, it probably could be done really well. But Flash will never be massively adopted, <laughs> obviously. Flash Docs. Yeah, no. For I mean, for obvious reasons, it won't be adopted. But it just feels that a lot of the standards being used on the the cloud at the moment is is lacking. That HTML is lacking. Even HTML five is you is reckon? not. I don't, I don't think it's only very five. new. We haven't seen. I know, I know, it. but even the new features, like looking into it, I still feel it's very hamstrung. I, I, I do feel like I, I could be way off base here, but I do feel that there is a an option or there is a possibility for someone to enter the market to actually create a new standard for cloud computing and stuff. Fair enough. Rather than HTML. I don't know. It, it just seems very sluggish. Like even the best web apps, if it was on done on desktop. Think about like waiting, you click a button and you have to wait for it to load. That shouldn't happen with a perfect cloud system. There yeah. should be no loading. It should just automatically work the same way that everything else is really fast. I mean, Flash does that really, really well. Like games and all that does it really well, well but it's just yeah. HTML is very, still sluggish. Well, what would the solution to that be? Well, something like, well, something like Flash or something that's easy to use, obviously. Uh, that is, uh, you know, based around and hosted on everyone's individual computers, but yeah. just a better code, a better, a better thing to work with. So you know, maybe even preloaded a little bit. I'm not sure. Yeah, but it's inevitable though. It is inevitable. That's going to go there. Like, just, I don't get me wrong. Something lacking. Well, maybe Google just isn't putting much effort into Docs at the moment. Yeah, well, that can be. But even say like with Zoho and all of the others. Like, I mean, even using them compared to say other office suites, it's the immediate feedback type stuff. I mean, right. any app you use there, like even, you say, Zero and some of the other, like, you know, all the cloud stuff we use, it's not immediate. It's not like, say, a, a quick click type thing. I mean, the fact that we have to wait when you click a button is, I mean, that's just a terrible UI choice, isn't it? I mean, that's just shocking. Well, is that, is that the browser fucking up or is it the bandwidth? I, well, I think it's both. I, I, I don't think the bandwidth will actually make that much of a, of a difference going there. Because, I mean, think about whenever you're viewing a website, say, anything going through, we still use multiple tabs because, you know, just loading one page again and again, you still have that little bit of a lag. No, but a lot of it is the bandwidth, because, like, any button you click has to then send that request to the server, the server mm -hmm. then has to respond. Well, so then how does that work with Flash and, say, like, on live and all of the games in that regard? I don't know. But on the desktop, like, desktop apps, like, Word on the desktop app, you click a button, it doesn't have to go to a server, it's just straight yeah, it's to the straight there. But it, the computer. fact that it does it, but I, I remember growing up when it took ages to like, you know, do that thing in Word, like you'd highlight your whole like, you know, assignment and you hit bold and it'd take a while then it'd all become bold. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember that. And you make that was bold? annoying. But the, the, we're going through that again, another teething problem uh, yeah. with docs and stuff, but I'm, I'm just finding that it, it'll it'll be make, interesting to see how it comes. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little bit more pessimistic with this. I think the Chromebook will go well, but I have a feeling that actually that HTML isn't the best one to be building it on. And then again, you have no idea about the code. Yeah, but still just the whole and slowness. The of HTML. Well, that, that's true, but look at what HTML is changing over over, over it all, over HTML4. Yeah. But there's also 
a lot of our JavaScript stuff as well. Yeah, true, true. And Ajax, I mean. Yeah, yeah, well that actually there's loads a, in automatically. A, your instant stuff. Yeah. Oh, the other thing too we didn't mention is the, the price. They, it, it looks like they were trying to do a subscription model. Yes. Is it? So 30 bucks for businesses, 20 bucks for schools, um, which is pretty cool, I think. But a lot of people you were saying thought that was too expensive. On a hack and use, I was saying, look, for nine hundred dollars or for even more, that's nine hundred dollars only for the, the school one. For like a business one, it's twelve hundred. I thought I could buy a for cheap a, netball court. I thought for a year that would be cool, but you're saying it was a three. It's year It's a minimum. three year minimum contract. Yeah, see, that's and I mean that means you can't upgrade again, and like Google's all like, oh, you never need to upgrade because we just keep on doing it again and again. Yeah. But I, I love the browser, and that's the majority of my internet use. But yeah. To pay twelve hundred dollars and to be locked into it for three years with yeah. just the browser and not able to do other things. But but I can I can guarantee you it's in Google's best interest to reduce that price down to zero. Oh, I I agree entirely. And they will they will work as hard as they possibly can to just give them away because that means yeah. What's the default browser that you use? Yeah, exactly. It's Chrome. <laughs> well, that's the Chrome whole book. OS. And then yeah. what's what are you going to search? You're going to use Google. So it'll be beneficial for them to just hand them out like. Chips. It just seems like, that. Like the Kindle is meant to be free in November. Exactly. Right? I'm not sure who they're targeting with this. Because say for like, you know, really techie people, the Chromebook won't, won't work. Like the really techie people still want to have access to the file system and be able to do anything that they want on there. So for, for the, yeah, of course, you're, you're saying like, you know, um, say Facebook, uh, Facebook, uh, Photoshop. Photoshop and say any games. Right, going really. There. Yeah, but say games, what, I, I probably... I probably play Flash games more than I do desktop games. Yeah, I know. But say even with like, you know, even with Photoshop and stuff, you just got a new laptop. Would yeah. you actually spend, say, $1,200? You only paid a grand for that. Would you spend $1,200 to be locked no. in for a year for just a laptop that only allows you to display a browser? No, but if it was like $200, bucks, i would buy it. Yeah, but I, so bucks. we'll say even with this now, like I'm just not sure exactly who they're targeting because even the lay person, the lay user, they're, they're not accustomed to actually using the computer in that way yet. The, the, the lay person is still very much using... They, they don't use online docs, they don't use Zoho, they don't use Google Docs. They're the yeah. techie, they're the geeky well, think, people. Yeah, I think you'd have to guide people into it. Like, when they first yeah. get it, you'd have to be like, Hey, what, what do you normally... Like, oh, your file structure, why don't you just use, say, Dropbox? Yeah. Or you want to write a Word document, why don't you just use this? They, they need a big advertising campaign with this, because I'm, I'm, I'm still yeah. not sure who they're targeting what the market it's an, is and It's stuff. an educational gap. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, but it's, it's gonna work. I, I'm not to, look, this is the future. Yeah. It definitely is. Like, without question, cloud is all the future. Yeah. I'm just not sure if this is implementation that's going to be the one to work. Yeah. So and there could be many reasons. Yeah. yeah. How long have we been going? I don't know. It's been a while, I feel like. This is going to be a long episode <laughs> again. Well, let, let's, let's go over on some the Hype 45 comments and the Hype AI. Yay! You can actually reply. Other than just text. And text is so boring. I want to do a massive shout out to Tim Cannon. Like, you are the fucking man! <laughs> Holy shit, dude! For people who haven't seen it, like, well, we'll put up a little clip there, but uh, he actually got one of the magnets uh, implanted, a, a little neodymium magnet, I think that's how you pronounce it, yeah. into the, in a, yeah, into his finger, into his uh, ring finger, actually implanted, like cut underneath and put onto the nerves there, so now he can sense where magnetic fields are. And the, oh my god, he is so crazy, because he actually... Um, I've got no net. Oh, right, yeah. it up. <laughs> Keep talking. What he actually uh, did was uh, put the video on the High 45 uh, Facebook page. So, yeah, you are an absolute champion, and it shows him wincing in pain, because the crazy bastard did it without any anesthetic. He said he put some numbing gel on it, but I'm sure that, you know, really helps when you've got a fucking scalpel going underneath the pad of your ring finger. So, yeah, absolute champion. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Actually, I think we might we might pause or come back because I. Oh, okay. Get... No net. Yeah, hey, we'll be back. Pause. Sorry, Tim. Wait, pause. Hey, welcome to. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we got the internet back on, but yeah. holy shit! Just going through this, there is no way that we are just going to quickly do this in five minutes. I'm thinking with the next yeah. episode. <laughs> we're thirty minutes already. We yeah, can't. No. We're just reading through some of the the previous comments just for like the last. The last 20 or so comments. And we were like AI chatting and... for about five minutes about just all of them there. There's and we were stuff. like, oh, let's just quick like do this as like, you know, five, ten minute thing. Fuck that. Yeah. Gonna make this a full on <laughs> episode for the next one. We're gonna go through everything in a hive AI and all, well, not everything, obviously. I love the big ones and talk about ideas. Sequ sequentially, yeah. There's a lot of good ones there. It's really <laughs> freaking great. Uh, well, let's just do hive AI. We won't go through the Facebook Ooh, ones. We so. should say, just to. It. You should uh, post your own ideas on there. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll, we'll talk about it next week. What, whatever's there and up, we'll, we'll, we'll go just sequentially through it. We'll just go down. Yeah, we may skip a few if they're boring. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so post yeah, something really interesting. Yeah. No, it'll be good fun. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for cool. tuning in. Um, tuning in. Who the fuck ever tunes in? What does that even mean? No one will know what that means. 
Thanks for clicking on the play button. Yeah, that's it. Still. <laughs> clicking? I'm using a connect. What do you mean? Oh, that's another cool thing that people were talking about as well. I know, there's a connect story that I had that I wanted to talk about. Oh, another. You can't talk about connect again. I love connect. It's the future of interaction. Oh, also, Microsoft bought, bought Skype. Connect version coming soon. Oh, yeah. Anyway. You've I'll uh, catch you next cool. week, I guess. It's been High 45. I'm Nathan Waters. Waters. Oh. No. I'm Tristan Grace. <laughs> catch you next week. <laughs>